almost, uh, you know, involved in, in, in Norm because uh, I work with him every day. And, and you know, when he sh didn't show up to, to work uh, the other day, you know, I was really concerned. And, uh, you know, when I heard it, you know, it just confirmed what I what I felt um, the other night when I left this, the studio. And it was it's just devastating. Well, it's unbelievable that both Bulls legends would pass in roughly the same day. Uh, just seeing Norm last Friday, and he was in really good spirits. He felt like uh, his health was was improving, that he was kind of turning the corner. He's looking forward to the rest of the season. You know, he's really kind of energized by the trades that the Bulls had made last week. He thought we're going to have playoff basketball to look forward to, and he thought on a personal level that, that his health was improving a little bit. Not that it makes it easier, but everybody knew Red was in bad health, and, and we could see it was coming. But... Uh, Norm caught everybody by surprise. I mean, I heard that, and uh, I think the way Kendall put it was best. It was like a punch in the stomach. He couldn't believe it at first. Well, it's, it's going to be very strange to have that empty chair. Obviously, with Norm, we never knew what he was going to say. And that was, that's what I think made the show really good, is that some days you'd get the 48 minutes of intensity and kind of straight down the middle stuff. But every now and again, something would really tick him off, and he would unload. For the first time I ever saw Norm in person, I'd, I didn't know him at the time. And I was with a buddy at a bar, and I looked across, and I think that's Norm Van Leer just walked in. And it was a real young crowd at the bar. Norm walked in, walked right past everybody, walked right behind the bar, and started pouring drinks for everybody. Yeah, he perked everybody up, you know, with, with one of his stories. Oh, hey, how you doing? You know, if, you, if you're in a down mood, he tried to pick you up. And, uh, uh, you know, he was the most popular guy here. Norm was a piece of work, man. He, he would come in, and you couldn't stay mad at him for five minutes. He'd come in, and he'd mess up my desk with spaghetti and popcorn, and he'd spill Coke on my keyboard. Yeah, and I think the thing about Norm is that, you know, it's not just that he's an old-school player who played in the, in the 60s and 70s. It's just that he had a way uh, that he viewed the game, and he felt that if you're not given the right effort, you're cheating the game and you're cheating yourself. And I think that was the thing that always came through in all the broadcasts was, he didn't care if you lost a game because somebody missed a shot or anything like that. It was just if you're not given the right effort, if you don't come in with the right preparation to know what you're supposed to be doing on the floor, he couldn't accept that. On the other end, you had Johnny and uh, Stacy King used to love to give him a good, uh, good hard time about it. You walk over to that scores table and there'd be Johnny and he'd have this same thing, another Ziploc baggie, an old one, never a new one, an old one. And it was full of like, uh, uh, Stacy describes it as, your grandma's old candy. It was full of just bad candy that nobody wanted. It had those turquoise colored mints that nobody wanted to touch. There are very few cities that have one icon, much less two, and then they both pass within a span of 24 hours. I mean, it's going to be a very surreal scene at the United Center for this game against Houston because, you know, people are going to want to celebrate their lives, but yet it's going to be kind of weird to walk into that building and realize that two, two guys who are so much a part of Bulls history over the last 30 to 40 years aren't with us anymore. It's just it's like a punch in the gut, man, that, that we, we didn't expect. And, you know, we just have to deal with it the best way we can.